Hey, what's up guys? It's Glenn and today I'm making a backsplash from Reclaim Palettes. This backsplash is going inside my laundry room and you can take a look at the before picture and the after before we get into the build. So here we have the location where the backsplash is going to be and then here's the finished product of the backsplash installed. So right now I'm going to give an example using a palm sander with a 60 grit sandpaper. Um, just to give an idea that some of this work I do can be done with less tools. However, yeah, it takes a lot more time. So once you've sanded down, you can then come back with a 220 grit sandpaper to give that an even more smooth finish. After going through my huge palette bundle, here's what I came up with. And now I'm measuring each palette to see which one is the same size and I put those in separate bundles. Now I'm doing this so that I don't have to keep jacking the planer up and down. If you've never heard of a thickness planer, in a nutshell, all this does is there's a huge blade inside spinning around and once you run the wood through it, it takes a layer off. Before doing the final cuts, I ran the pallets through the table saw and then that gave me at least one straight edge which I had to run up against the fence. With the straight edge that was just created, I set the table saw fence to an inch and a quarter, which is the consistency I'm looking for. Now I just continue to run every pallet through until I had none left. Now over at the miter saw, I set up a template which would give me a nine inch cut. I cut off the end first to give me a straight edge, press it up against the stop, and then cut. Now to clean this piece of wood up, I'm going to use my palm sander with 220 grit sandpaper, and that will give it a smooth finish. Now, if you have a belt sander, you can be sure to use that as well. And now that all the manual work is done, here's a look at my pile. For my project, I'm using a half inch piece of plywood, which I had every intention of using a quarter inch, but because this is not going flat against the wall, it would not work because it would be a bit flimsy. So to make this cut, I'm going to use my circuit saw jig. My miter saw would work as well, but I don't have the current setup for this. Now the whole purpose of this project was to hide the washer hose and all the electrical plugs. Now with all that in the way, I need to push the backsplash off the wall a bit, so that's why I have this piece of wood here. Now on the starting edge of the backsplash, there is three different sizes of wood. There is a 9 inch, a 6 inch, and a 3 inch. And the pattern repeats from the bottom to the top. This design could have went either way. I could have used all pallets that were the same thickness, but I wanted to have almost like a stack stone look. From the beginning of the project all the way to this point, I was uncertain how I wanted to attach the individual strips to the back panel. I still can't believe I settled for the hot glue gun, but believe me, this stuff is on there. I had to take one off and I literally had to use a chisel. So one thing to notice that all these pieces I'm using right now are all nine inch pieces. Only the starting point and the end point would have a different size. Now while putting these together, the goal is to not put the same color or the same type right next to each other. And to finish off the opposite end, I mitered the corners so that I can have a more professional look. Majority of the ends are not even equal, so what I want to do is take the sander and round the edges off so we have no sharp edges. I used a dark walnut Danish oil to apply some color to this thing, but I could have easily left it as it is and just applied clear coat. This is a low traffic area, so applying the Danish oil is fine. The instruction is pretty clear on the can, just apply it with a rag or you can apply it with a brush. And now the backsplash is done. I'm going to install a piece of wood, which will be like a track so that the backsplash can just slide right onto this. Now here's the custom made bracket that sits on the backsplash and what that does is when you slide the backsplash it lands on that piece of wood that I just installed. 
So up on installation day, I figured out how to mount one side of the backsplash, the other side not so much. I was thinking about magnet or even Velcro. So if you guys have some cool ideas, um, let me know down in the comment section. The cool thing about this project is the back panel is removable and I can get to my hose and plugs if I ever have to. So, does everyone need a backsplash? Absolutely not. But what you can take for this project is that you can use the same kind of design to make a headboard or an end table or anything that comes to mind. So, look guys, thanks for watching my videos and I will catch you guys on the next one. And if you're new to my channel, subscribe.